Welcome to another edition of Boxing Info. I'm your host, The Islander. Uh, listen, this is the second go around at this, and I want to apologize because you know, I know I've been, you know, kind of dormant on this channel for the past couple of years as I've been extremely disenchanted with with the sport of boxing. And I'll and I'm gonna, I've, I've got like some different ideas of what I want to do, and I want to basically do more videos but shorter videos with a single idea in each video and. Instead of being all over the board with a total recap of the previous weekend, a preview of the following weekend, and a never-ending cycle of this, because what I found out, and, and you probably all have known this too, is that part of my disenchantment has come with the actual changes in the sport of boxing, and the changes to me have been dilution, which has been going on since you know, before I even started watching boxing in the early 80s, the sport's been diluted slowly over time, and now it's just a it's a big mess, in my opinion. Uh, and those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, before you write a comment saying, what, what are you talking about, Islander, with the dilution? There are 17 weight classes with four recognized world champions, and most of them, not all of them, most of them, okay? That's dilution. And with that said... In this video, I want to cover a fight that was basically last month in September that I really wish I would have done a preview of to give my opinions and this and that, but I've got enough to say about this fight to keep it as the central focus of this video. And then I'll go on and do some other videos with some central focus also, um, both from the past and in the future, as long as I can keep them like about between 5 and 10 minutes. So with a minute and 45 gone... The central idea of this video is about the Triple G Canelo Alvarez fight from last month and what the expectations were and what actually happened and transpired in the fight. If you listen to different news outlets, specifically the HBO uh, branches, when I say branches, I mean Max Kellerman going on ESPN as former employee, employer and other news outlets promising that this was going to be the second coming of, of Hagler Hearns. You know, may not live up to Hagler Hearns, but it was going to be the second coming of Hagler Hearns if you listen to him. All right, he, here's the deal. I didn't watch the fight live. I watched it in replay. But, of course, I got all of the bad news coming into it. And let me just back up to tell you what I expected to happen in this fight from everything I've seen and everything I know. I expected Triple G to stop Canelo Alvarez. Maybe not not score a 10-count knockout of him, but a stoppage. And I was sold this bill of goods, both by Triple G's reputation and Dirk Diggler, don't start with me, and by his body of work, and more importantly, his trainer Abel Sanchez, where Abel Sanchez... Triple G has gone on to say that he's he's going to fight Mexican style. And one compliment I'll give to Max Kellerman in the post-fight or on Jim Lampley's uh, attempt at doing this show is that Mexican style means specifically what Max Kellerman said. That is Julio Cesar Chavez versus Edwin Rosario, where you're going to put your head on the other guy's chest, walk through any punches he has, and basically hit anything you can, arms, hips, elbows, body, head, whatever. That is the expectation I had for Triple G strategy on Canelo. Now, before some of you say, well, Canelo is just a superior athlete with superior firepower and, and Triple G was respecting him, that's all good and well, all right? The danger in... Canelo Alvarez to Triple G was no greater than the danger of Edwin Rosario's power to Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. Let's be clear about this now. Okay. And I look as some of you have affectionately referred to me as the professor. I, you know, I take that, you know, with a grain of salt. I appreciate it, of course. I think of myself more as like a boxing doctor. I, I look for patterns. I look for similarities. I look for Things that have, have that I've seen before, and it migrates forward into what has you know what, what transpires now. Something from the past that transpires now. And let me back up to so my expectations are that Triple G is going to stop Canelo before the fight, and was massively disappointed. Now, as far as the fight's concerned, 
Before I even saw the fight, I heard all the hubbubaloo about the scoring. And Adelaide Bird, just like another gentleman I'm going to tell you about, should never t score a title fight ever again. If she would have scored the fight 115-113 for Canelo, I wouldn't have had any problems. If she would have scored the fight 116-112 for Triple G, I wouldn't have had a problem. If she would have scored the fight a draw, I wouldn't have had a problem. The other two judges, I may disagree with uh, certain rounds that they scored that were pulled out, uh, which should have given Triple G a win. Personally, I thought in watching the fight, it was a better quality fight than I thought it was going to be based on the outcome. Uh, with two-way action, maybe not sustained, but two-way action throughout the fight, I thought that Triple G probably edged out Canelo uh, you know, and when I say edged out, you can argue that he won 8 of the 12 rounds. You could argue that he won 7 of the 12 rounds. You could argue that the fight was a draw. It's no big deal, okay? The fight itself, after all this news about the scoring and all this stuff, when I finally sat down to watch it, as it's transpiring, another fight comes to mind. And the fight that I think it looks like is basically Marvin Hagler's fight against Sugar Ray Leonard. The expectations before the fight, and this is why I kind of get upset with some of the millennials out there that think they know everything about boxing, they know everything, they, they have their lips pressed against Mike Tyson's anus uh, because they've watched videotapes of Mike Tyson and don't don't understand that if you're not there when the fight happens or the build-up to the fight, you don't understand what the expectations are before the fight and what transpires in the fight and after the fight makes the whole event possible or makes the controversy possible. So I'm sitting here watching this fight and right away the pattern that goes into the computer that is my brain is this is the re a repeat of Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard on many fronts. First, the ridiculous scoring of one judge in both fights. Second, what the expectations were for most of us before the fight. The expectations, at least in most boxing circles, was that Triple G was going to wear out Canelo and overwhelm him eventually. Much like Abel Sanchez was was prognosticating before the fight in the 24-7 episodes. So with getting back to Hagler and Leonard, most people, even those people who wanted Leonard to win the fight, had a fear that Hagler would eventually wear him out. He was leaving a wake of destruction in his path. He was the true middleweight, and he was fighting a blown-up welterweight in Leonard, who had who'd been inactive. And basically, Leonard looked the quicker, the sharper, skilled fighter. And Marvin Hagler looked like he had lost a step. He looked like he was a step behind. He looked like he had problems pulling the trigger. Now, unlike Triple G, Marvin Hagler just threw caution to the wind in the second half of the fight and just started throwing punches in bunches. And whenever he could trap Leonard on the ropes, he would do it. Um, and Triple G, in my opinion, a lot of you have warned me and have said that he really isn't as good as he is. Dirk Diggler, number three, is, is, has been his biggest detractor of, of all my, of all my uh, subscribers. But I'm not going to go that far. I think what it is is that something has happened, and I don't know if it's part of one of my theories or patterns about fighters making it to the pay-per-view level where they're protecting something now, and they're not willing to take the risks that they once took. That might be part of it. Another part might be the Marvin Hagler syndrome, where... He's waited all his life for this big fight, and now he's just a step slow. Because, in my opinion, you know, neither one of them looked that good. Uh, Canelo, you know, surprised me. And I think that one of the things, if I would have done a preview for this fight, that I was, you know, most impressed about Alvarez before the fight was that I, I didn't realize the background of his older brother and the trainers that trained his older brother also trained him and that they didn't, they, they were much, again, this is the similar par parallels to the Hagler Leonard fight in the fact that, you know, Canelo had the family trainers that didn't train anybody else really, just like Marvin Hagler had the Petronelli brothers, you know, obviously it was the different fighters who, who were in different roles in my, you know, in my comparison, but that says a lot about the success of Canelo and the fact that in the lead up, the 24 seven, one of them said, look, we understand we have dynamite in front of us. We must train to know how to handle it. 
And with that said, um, w with that said, my screensaver just came off for some some unknown reason. Um, with all that said, they executed like they knew they had dynamite in front of them. They punched when they had to, they moved when they had to, and they fought effectively. This is what boxing is about. Triple G, on the other hand, I'm under the expectation he's going to be like Julio Cesar Chavez in 1987. He's just going to bull forward. He'll take some punches. He'll give them. He'll hit arms, hips, elbows, body. I mean, I don't understand this style of fighting from what I call the, it's almost like a hit and run kind of thing. You're going to lean in and, hit and throw their body and then back off right away. Why? I don't understand what's become of this sport. You have to sell out in these big events. And I think what's happening is it's you and I who are feeding what I call this fallacy. They're going to fight a rematch now. And they're going to make millions and millions of dollars on the rematch when neither one of them sold out. Now, I will say this. I think as far as who established their fight plan better and executed, I think, I think Canelo did. You know, I still think Triple G won. I kind of, you know, I wanted Triple G to win. I, I just, I don't... You know, either A, he has grown old overnight and lost a step like Marvin Hagler. B, Dirk Diggler 3 has it right. He was never as good as he was and just never fought world-class fighters, which I think I, I, I kind of back off of that because, you know, in, until he destroyed um, the chin checker, um, you know, and I know David Lemieux did also, you know, he made fighters bend that had never bent, been bent before, in, in my opinion. Um, so, and getting back to the Leonard Hagler fight, one judge scored the fight seven rounds to five for Leonard. One judge scored the fight seven rounds to five for Hagler. And if that fight was ruled a draw, there would have been far less more controversy than there was even 20 years, or actually 30 years later. It was 30 years this past April that happened. And the controversy is still raging on about that fight. Ref, uh, Judge Jojo Guerrera had the fight scored 118 to 110 for Sugar Ray Leonard. I think even Sugar Ray Leonard was embarrassed by that scorecard, much the way I think Canelo was was embarrassed. And it makes you wonder if there is some type of collusion going on. You know, the best part about some of these big super fights is watching the reaction of Teddy Atlas and Stephen A. Smith on ESPN afterwards. Because Stephen A. Smith uh, comes from this NBA background that, that, that thinks he can apply NBA uh, mentality to world championship boxing. And Teddy Atlas is trying to basically blowing a gasket out of his neck saying this has to stop. You know, they're calling for like a federal oversight of, of the sport of boxing. I don't know how the federal government of the United States is going to oversight boxing in the UK, boxing in Germany, boxing in, in Thailand, Japan, all these other places. It's kind of ridiculous. What I really think needs to happen um, in regards, Jojo Guerrero, to my knowledge, never uh, never scored a, a world title, at least a, uh, a high profile world title fight ever again after the, after the Hagler Leonard debacle. Uh, I think Adelaide Bird needs the same treatment as as Jojo Guerrera. And as far as my solution to this problem, the judges cannot be at ringside anymore. It, it's almost like the umpires in baseball. They all have different strike zones, even though there's one home plate. You know, there's different sized batters that come in, but the strike zone is from the knees to the armpits over a plate. That's it. Yes, I know people's vision's different. But at the same time, I think that human error is creeping into too many things now. And with the, just like I was stating about another fight that was controversial. Oh, I think it was the first um, uh, Chocolatito Soren Visai fight. The judges need to be basically isolated from the arena. They need to be in heavily guarded suites, maybe with a stormtrooper holding a gun to their head. And they need to be watching the fight the same way we watch the fight at home on HBO or pay-per-view or whatever, Showtime. And they need to score the rounds one by one. A, a representative of the commissioner needs to be there watching what they're doing, taking notes. Because I don't believe seeing the fight from one angle 
and another judge seeing it from another side of the ring, another judge seeing it from the other side of the ring, it's really fair to us, the consumers. I don't think it is anymore. Because I can blame this scoring crap on a number of things. All of you who have been at fights understand what I do, that when you're sitting at one side of the ring, the fight looks totally different than what it does when you get home and watch the replay of it on TV. So I think these judges need to be forcibly put into an isolated room, isolated from each other. If they need to be held at gunpoint, I don't, you know, I don't care. And they need to watch it on a high definition screen, the same way we watch it, and the same way the people calling the fight for HBO or Showtime are watching it. Harold Letterman told me he doesn't watch it on the screen. When he's scoring, he's scoring from the press row vantage point of what he sees through the ropes, which, you know, funny, maybe the older judges are better than the newer ones because most of the time he and I agree on on, 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 on fights. Uh, you know, and getting back to that Soren Visai, um Chocolatito first fight, you know, I've watched it over and over again to coincide with the fight itself, which I'll do a video about. And I don't know how in the world these judges can score a fight for a guy who's, one, backing up and giving ground to the champion who's coming forward, gets hit 200-plus more times than he's hit the other guy, and all of the elements of scoring go out the window because it, it, it's very clear to me that Chocolatito won the first fight. Um this case with Triple G and Canelo, not so clear of who won the fight. And I was thinking after I watched it, if they would, the draw is palatable if only Adelaide Bird's scorecard had the fight scored 114, 114 or something to that effect. It would have been livable. But now, again, getting back to Stephen A. Smith and, 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 uh, and Teddy Atlas, they're sitting there talking about collusion and where, wherever there's big money there's there's big collusion stop and ask yourself something for, for a reason who seemed to benefit from the adelaide bird scorecard did triple g benefit from it no did his promoters benefit from it no did we the consumers benefit from it no did canelo benefit from it and not really i mean he was kind of embarrassed by it but who else, what, who else did? Maybe it's his promoter. Maybe it's the A side of the, of the promotion. Maybe it's Golden Boy. Look, they've got a rematch of a fight I thought they would never be a rematch of, that, that they would have left Canelo in a heap, that Triple G would have left Canelo in a heap in the corner somewhere, and there would be no reason for a rematch. Now, there, now, there's, a, now there's a guarantee of a rematch. So follow the money, folks. I, I've been very busy with, you know, with, all the political stuff that's been going on in, in the United States for the past two years. And one of the big reasons what happened here happened here was because of dirty dealings in Washington. And just, you know, like I said, follow the money. Where does the money get funneled to from this event? It gets funneled right to Oscar De La Hoya's pockets, okay? Let's be very clear about this. And he himself has been involved in many fights, whether he was fighting or when his fighters are fighting, where a questionable result has emerged. That's going to do it for this show. I'll be back to talk about Chocolatito and Soren Visai uh, shortly.